Hello everybody, uh, this is the 2 meter 70 centimeter Go Box, uh, 50 caliber ammo can. As you can see it's all sealed up. I painted it black with the call sign. Here's your uh, NMO antenna mount. Pretty straightforward on the outside. Okay, we've opened it up. The nice part about an ammo can is that the cover is removable. Keeping a quarter inch uh, to eighth of an inch stereo adapter and a pen right there. Here's the interior. You can see everything's packed in there very nicely. First we have the microphone. This is the charging cable for the AC charger for the battery. This is the computer programming cable for the radio. Got an external speaker right here. And you can just turn it on. We're hearing someone there. Okay, I have removed the radio. Uh, what we've got in here is a 12 volt lead acid battery. This battery came from a jump starter pack which was incapable of jump starting my Nissan Sentra. Uh, if it couldn't jump start that car I decided it was useless. I was going to return it and instead I thought let's have some fun. Here's the uh, AC. This is the AC power supply for the charger. These two yellow wires deliver AC power uh, 17 volts I believe to the charging board. Uh, this converts it to DC. I'm not exactly sure what the output is, but it does charge the battery. And uh, there's your battery check. We have a uh, power switch. We also have two quarter inch stereo headphone jacks. Of course it's all mono, but I wired it up so both speakers would work. You've got your speaker or headphone selector switch. I use these uh, in an airplane. I am a pilot, so I will bring this thing in an airplane once in a while and plug my headset into it. It's a lot of fun to do aeronautical mobile. Uh, here's your Anderson power pole and a cigarette lighter socket for external power. And if you look down in there, you can see the radio mounting bracket. And uh, here you've got a big coil of wire. This is the antenna wire that's 18 feet long. Uh, I didn't want to keep that in there, but it was the only way to get the SWR to be acceptable. Coiling it up like that creates a ballon, and uh, it fixed the SWR problem. Before that, the SWRs were 3.0, and there was nothing I could do about it. I also keep a female-to-female uh, -female SO239 in between those two and a short cable connected to the radio. This is for uh, quick, quick access if you want to use a different antenna or something of that nature. This bracket here is for the faceplate to go on, which uh, we're going to show you in a little while. Okay, we've put the radio back in the box. Uh, here's our external speaker. It's an MFJ clear tone speaker. I took the back off, and the magnet just holds the speaker in place, so it fits right in there, which is very nice. Uh, here's the radio, of course. Now here's the antenna. This is a Diamond NR73B. It's an NMO mount uh, mobile antenna. It moves around a little. Okay, this is the desktop setup. The faceplate fits right on that bracket that I made. One of the really nice parts about this radio, this is a Kenwood TMV71A, which is a great radio. I really like it. Uh, you can use a Cat5 cable between the faceplate and the control and the body, rather, the faceplate and the body. You can also do it with the microphone. I'm not doing it at the moment, but they both use RJ45 connectors and it works just fine. This is just a one foot Cat5 cable that I bought. It works just fine. As you can see, the external speaker fits right in there. Um, 
We're hearing, we're hearing something that sounds like Echo Link, or I'm sorry, Auto Patch. And this is how you can use the radio uh, for a desktop setup. Uh, there is a faceplate mounting bracket, which I have not bought, but uh, this seems to work just fine with Velcro. Okay, so the Kenwood TMV71A is a 50 watt radio. It transmits at 50 watts on 70 centimeters and on 2 meters. Um, as you might imagine, this small battery in here, which can't even jump start a Nissan Sentra, uh, should probably not be used for 50 watts. You can use it, the battery makes a little bit of a whistling sound, that's probably not a good thing. So we've got here is a power pole connector and a cigarette lighter socket for external power right there. What I did to complement the GoBox was a jump starter pack that I made off of with parts from a previous jump starter that I had that I could not find the battery for. I bought a uh, battery box at Walmart along with a uh, deep cycle marine starting battery. So it's kind of a combination starter deep cycle battery. Put it in the battery box. Uh, under this zip tie is the chip with a reverse polarity alarm from the old jump starter and the power switch. And there's your grounding cable and the uh, positive cable is on the back side. We've got a uh, voltmeter here for battery checking. And two Anderson power poles uh, fused for 30 amps each. And of course you can connect that to the go box, which we're going to do. Uh, KI4NIL. Good evening. I'm not the neighbor. I apologize for the confusion. I was uh, just saying hello. I'm testing out my uh, go box radio that has a uh, Kenwood TMV71A in it. And I heard you folks talking. Good evening, Mike. Uh, the name is Frank here. Uh, no, I made the Go Box about three years ago. I've changed radios since then, and uh, most recently I put in a better external speaker, uh, an MFJ clear tone. I had to take the back off the case of the speaker in order to fit it in. Um, I've got a uh, lead acid battery and a Kenwood TMV71A and the external speaker all wrapped up in a 50 caliber ammo can. So it's a tight squeeze, but uh, it works well. Okay, as you can see, we were able to make a contact. I was using external power for that contact since we were using full power, which of course is 50 watts. Here's your external power connector. Uh, and I made an extension cord with power pole connectors on it. Going over here, uh, the cord's about six feet long. Another good thing to have, of course, is a cigarette lighter connector with power poles on it. And there you go, that's a uh, go box ready to go for emergencies and events. No need for external power, you've got this huge battery which is available for uh, powering the radio. And uh, plus the radio built into the box in case you want to put the radio up in a tree and use crossband repeater mode for special events or emergencies, searching for a lost person. There's all kinds of great uses. And putting it in an ammo can which is waterproof is also great, especially if you were going to do that, put it up in a tree for crossband repeater. Uh, holes have been drilled in the case, so it's no longer waterproof. I wouldn't go dunking it, but if it got rained on, I don't think it would be a problem. Hope you enjoyed.